Hey fellow photographers, what did you photograph today? And maybe more importantly, what are you going to photograph this Sunday, Worldwide Pinhole Photography Day? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the Science of Photography. Today we're talking about pinhole photography because this Sunday, April 29th, is Worldwide Pinhole Photography Day. It always falls on the last Sunday of April. Now you may or may not be aware that I already have a lot of pinhole videos that I'll link here in a playlist, but those videos can be kind of dense and it goes through a lot of the math and the trigonometry behind why a pinhole camera works. Today I just wanted to make a quick video and open up to you, the viewer, in the comments section for some question and answers. Any questions you have about pinhole photography, leave them down below. I'll start off by answering some of the most common questions I get asked about pinhole photography, and the first one at everyone's list is, what kind of pinhole camera should I use? Now remember, a camera is just a light-proof box, so you can basically make it out of anything. It's a pinhole camera, because at one end we have a little pinhole, and on the other end we have some sort of photosensitive material, whether it be paper, film, or a digital sensor. You can always buy a pinhole camera, like this large 8x10 pinhole camera, which is simply a wooden box with a pinhole on one side, and an area on the back where you can put a film holder. So this will hold an 8x10 film holder in which you can load either paper or film. You can also build your own pinhole camera like I have here. Kind of follows a similar design as the other one. This is for 4x5 and it does accept 4x5 film holders. So it can, again, photograph on paper or film in the 4x5 size. Now the advantage of building your own, it takes a little bit more effort but you can customize it in terms of what focal length you want and you can actually calculate the uh, optimal aperture size, the optimal pinhole size for maximum sharpness. And I have videos about this in the playlist. Maybe you don't want to buy a camera and maybe you don't want to make one that's too complicated. So the easiest do-it-yourself pinhole camera is the lens cap pinhole camera. This is simply a lens cap from a Canon camera. And what I've done is I've drilled a hole in here and just taped a pinhole onto this lens cap. Now by using this, I can screw this onto the body of the camera and take pinhole pictures that way. With whatever you choose, it's important to know what the size of the pinhole is and what the focal length of the camera that you're using is in order to calculate an effective f-stop for your camera. This is extremely important for determining the exposure you'll need to take pictures. Most pinhole cameras that you buy will either tell you what the f-stop is and the focal length and possibly the size of the pinhole. If you have two of those pieces of information, you can always calculate the third. But on something like this, a DIY solution, like a body cap, you have to look at the flange distance. So you can approximate the focal length by looking at the flange distance of your camera. That's the distance between the lens mount and the sensor, or the film plane, if you're using a film camera. Now by knowing the flange distance, we can get an approximate focal length distance, and we can use the size of the pinhole to calculate an effective f-stop. Now if you don't have a good way of calculating your effective f-stop, on a digital camera, you have the benefit of being able to guess and check. You can guess your exposure and then increase the time as necessary. Now remember, the aperture is set fixed by the pinhole diameter that you've chosen or created. That means on a digital camera, we can vary the ISO values and we can vary the shutter speed. But as always, to avoid noise, we're going to be shooting at the base ISO values on our digital cameras and simply increasing the shutter speed, which also means that a tripod is almost necessary for most pinhole photography. So enough about the actual gear, what about the things that we're photographing on? Now the second most frequently asked question that I get is, if I'm using film, what film should I use for pinhole photography? The truth is, any film will do. However, there are some that are better suited than others. For example, in my opinion, Fuji Acros 100 is the best film for pinhole photography because this film has properties that make it less prone to reciprocity failure. What's reciprocity failure? We'll be covering that in a video later this week. Now you can also use photographic paper, but proper testing has to be done to get a sort of equivalent ISO value of the paper itself. Usually for most papers, this hovers around ISO 3, so the paper is much less sensitive to film, which will require much longer exposure times. And of course, if you're using digital, again, try and keep that base ISO as low as possible, and then use long shutter speeds to get the lowest noise floor on your images. If you're using your digital camera to guess and check the exposures, don't be afraid to bump up that ISO value very, very high until you have a usable image. Then, when you know approximately what the exposure should be, or you can guesstimate an f-stop, that's when you can dial it back down and use those longer shutter speeds. Now, I encourage you to go out and participate in Worldwide Pinhole Photography Day this Sunday. Pinhole photography actually can have some advantages in terms of cost to performance over modern lenses. Remember that a pinhole camera produces a rectilinear image. That means little to no distortion and doesn't have that fisheye effect that some of those super wide angle lenses have. 
That means if you build your own pinhole camera or you go super wide, you can get unique perspectives that may be difficult to achieve with a lens or the lenses that you use to achieve those looks are extremely expensive and out of most people's budgets. Pinhole photography is also a very cheap and affordable way to get into the larger format photography. You don't need to have one of those big expensive cameras. You don't have, need to have those large format lenses. All you need is a pinhole. All in all, it's about having fun and sort of pushing your creativity. If you're in a creative rut, maybe this is some new way to look at the world. As always, have fun photographing and subscribe to this channel to stay up to date with some more pinhole videos coming this week. And don't forget, if you have any questions relating to pinhole photography, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them before Sunday. So until next time, as always, happy photographing.